Welcome to Roadkill Retro. Um, this is my first video, and my favorite retro computer is definitely the Commodore 64, so it seemed appropriate to me to make this the first video on the channel. Um, what I want to cover in this video is something very brief, but something that was difficult for me, <clears throat> which is um, was, was running Power C and being able to you know, edit my source code, compile, and link and run it. And it took a little bit of uh, work to get that, to, you know, function. And I thought, well, heck, you know, if there's a video out there, this would be making it a lot easier for a lot of people. So let's go ahead and uh, get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to attach, um, I'm going to auto start a disk image. And I have Power C. Disk one. There we go. <clears throat> that loaded fast. So um, there's two editors. There's the standard editor, and then there's one for syntax checking. The standard editor is you just type ed, and then you can just go into it. And, you know, you have to wait a minute because we all know how the 1541 drive is. All right, so this is just a standard editor with ED. Now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to hit run stop, which on my, which on my PC keyboard is uh, caps lock. And there it is. Okay, <clears throat> so how I'm going to get out of this editor is I'm going to type quit. That takes me back to the command prompt. Now, if I want to run the syntax checking editor, I type C-E-D. Now, I don't know what syntax checking is doing because I haven't seen it do anything, but, you know, I haven't played with this a whole lot. So, I mean... I'm sure it does something. I just haven't been that far. But what we are going to do is make a simple little program. And I have managed to compile, link, and execute. So that should at least give you a definite boost. You know, if you're getting started here. So basically, when you get into the editor, if you any command you want to do... You want to save your file, you want to quit, whatever you want to do, you're going to hit your run stop like this. If you hit run stop and then you go, oh, I don't want to do anything, you just hit enter and bam, you're back. So let's go ahead and put in a little program here. And... Okay, now here was my first problem I had. Um, curly braces. Okay, when you're on the Commodore 64, you know, you have brackets, but where are those curly braces? Well, on my real Commodore 64, it's actually the plus and minus in the top right portion of the keyboard. Plus and minus are now your curly braces open and close. <clears throat> so um, on Vice, though, that was even worse because I got on vice and I'm like well plus is putting a plus sign and the minus is putting because I was using a symbolic keyboard so I was doing minus and then minus was uh, the closing brace well I'm like okay I that doesn't work so what I had to do is I had to change it to the positional keyboard now I know you can edit the uh, mapping for for vice but I read, I looked at it. I, I haven't done it yet. I don't know how you do it exactly. So I, I found out how to do it with the positional keyboard. So that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> so with the positional keyboard, I'm going to do a uh, minus. So it's a shift minus and then a shift plus. So now with, uh, with that, we have our open and curly braces. Hope that wasn't like too confusing but anyway here print f oh 
the open quote the open parentheses like in a different location because now I'm using positional keyboard, so it throws me off a little bit. I like symbolic better, but um, let's see. Oop, nope. Uh, where's a dash? Oh well, we just do this. Now, the next one was uh, <laughs> that threw me off too. Was uh, backslash? Where is that? Well, the backslash in the positional keyboard set in a win vice, at least in my positional file, it is not that one. It is. Which one is it? No, it's not that one. It is. Which one is it again? Backslash was. Oh, insert. That's what it is. Insert and then N. So then we do a close quotation, close parenthesis, and semicolon. Okay, so there we go. Now we have a very simple program. Let's go ahead and save it to disk or with PowerC put it to disk. So I'm going to go ahead and hit run stop. There's command. I'm going to type uh, put. And let's just call this power. And then I'll put comma and I'll put the device number 8. Oh, ooh, almost made a mistake. Power, you have to put the extension PowerC comma 8. Otherwise, the compiler is not going to want to compile it. It doesn't like it's going to add it for you either, so it's not real fancy. All right, so let's go ahead and quit this. I'm going to type quit. And now I'm going to go PC. And we're going to do power dot C. I may fast forward this part a little bit so you know speed things up because all right so this is insert source test there is <clears throat> there is a way to uh, bypass this um, you have to type CC and then a, a dash something or a slash something but I'm not sure what it is right now but if you use this little slash or whatever it is it will skip the insert source disk, you know, uh, questionings, you know, because it wants you to flip the disk. But if you have like a, a two disk drive set up, then you don't need to do this. And there we go. We are compiling. And the compiler disk is already in the drive. So there we go. Object disk, it's already the object file is already on this disk, so there we go. All right, so now we're compiled and we're back to um, the command prompt. So now we have to link. So we do that by typing link. <clears throat> okay, now that link is loading up, we now have a 
program or an object file that we need to link is called power dot oh because you remember our source file is power dot c so now our object file is power dot o now this is another one and this is where the delete key comes in on vice and you want to use the up arrow up arrow tells it to include uh, the standard library files and to do this we're going to need to flip the disk we're going to need to go to power c disk 2. so i'm going to attach disk drive 8 and then we're going to go to not that one well, that is a good game. Um, let's see, 64 programs. Here we go. Program and Power C. And I'm going to go to Power C Disk 2. Now that's mounted and hit enter. Okay, now I'm going to hit enter one more time, and it's going to give me a prompt input file name. So I'm going to switch the disk back. I mean, I guess you don't technically have to, but I'm going to flip it back to disk one. Just so I keep all the files on that same disk. Okay, so we're going to call it. Now, <clears throat> you have two options here, I believe. I'm not exactly sure on this yet, but since we're going to execute within the shell, and I uh, want to execute without the shell. We're going to call it power dot sh, short for shell. So whatever program you make, you want to compile it and run it in the shell. It has to have the extension dot sh, and hit enter. Now it's saving the executable. Okay. Now if I hit l, l lists all the files on the directory. And you see that I have power.c and I have power.sh and power.o. So let's go ahead and run power. And we don't have to put the extension, just run it. There we go. Isn't that awesome? I think it is a lot of fun to program um, on the original equipment. I am not at home because, well, I'm a truck driver, so... <clears throat> that's why it's roadkill retro and when i am at home i'm definitely programming on my real hardware um it's just more fun than cross assembling or anything else it's you know just being able to enjoy your retro computers so this is the way i like to do it and um i hope you enjoyed the video and please go ahead and like if you like the video and subscribe thanks and i'll see you bye